Hi guys, 6th of April and I'm going to sow the sweet corn. I'm actually going to chip the sweet corn before I sow the sweet corn. I've worked out I can get 90 plants in them two beds. That's without overcrowding them too much. So I'm growing Swift F1, Golden Bantam, Rising Sun and Incredible. I love this Incredible Sweet Corn. Did amazingly well last year. And this year I'm going to do something totally wacky in order to chip the seed. I'm going to try and inoculate it with some fungi, some good beneficial fungi, before I actually sow it. So I'm going to soak it in fungi. I'll show you what I'm going to do. What I have here in this bucket, carefully collected yesterday, is da, 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 Australia's Phragmites marsh grass. Look at them rascals, I just took them off someone's allotment. That one of them roots was about five foot long. They've had some weed membrane on the surface and it's just traveled right the way. And one of them, I just pulled it up. It was about five foot long. But if you use a rotavator, guys, on a allotment that's just been neglected for a couple of years, that's what you're going to chop up and just create horrendous problems for yourself. Better to dig it, fork it and dig it out. All right, let's show you what I'm going to do with this. And then I'll tell you why. Now, I'll tell you why I'm doing this. I was watching a podcast from Dr. James White where he's talking to Matt Powers and he believes it used to grow on the banks of rivers and deltas and on floodplains because sweet corn puts out aerial roots. So those aerial roots are a sign that, you know, as the river went into flood and silt settled around the plants, the silt built up and so the sweet corn had put aerial roots out to tap into those silts. That's, uh, I think that's his theory anyway. What the Native Americans did, they would go out into the wilds and they would collect these grasses, some of the uh, big tall grasses, the wild grasses, and they would mash them up and put them in warm water, hot water, and then they would use that solution to inoculate the corn. And they didn't actually know why they were doing this and how it had even developed that they did this. The Indians themselves didn't know, but all they did know that was that it worked. It worked really well because the sweet corn was uh, just so much better if they did that. I don't think it would have been called sweet corn then. It would have been maize or something like that, wouldn't it? So the maize always did amazingly if they did that. Um, and it turns out that it, what it actually is, they're inoculating the corn or the kernels with the, with the fungi that's in the wild root. And our corn, our sweet corn, has been so bred and bred and bred and bred that maybe, well, possibly and definitely, a lot of that uh, indigenous population of fungi is no longer in the roots of the, those corn plants kernels because it's been selectively bred bred out basically so what he was saying was basically if we introduce some of the fungi from some native grasses that might stimulate the corn better our modern varieties of corn and we could get a better yield so what i'm going to actually do is oh, Every variety I grow, I'm growing four varieties and half of each variety I'm going to inoculate with the mycorrhizal grass mixture. The other half I'm just going to inoculate them with just rainwater. And we're going to see if there's any difference. There's a bit of a little bit of a process to this. So let's get on with it. He gave no actual instructions on how to do this, mind you. But what he did say was the, they used to just mash up the roots. So that's what I'm just going to kind of smash and smash them around a little bit. So we can release some of that mycorrhizal from it. 
and I think the, the, the reason for soaking it in warm or hot, hotter water is to kill off any nasties that are in the root. Nasties that we don't want around the, you know, the corn kernels. You know, nasties that we, we don't want around the corn seed itself. The bounciest board on the planet probably wasn't the best thing to smash this corn up on. Right, so I'm just going to get some warm water, hot water, give it a little soak in that. I don't know how long, I don't even know how long I'm supposed to soak it in there, but I would imagine you'll release the, the fungal spores pretty quickly from that. Might be able to just mash it like that. Here goes the warm water. Apparently the warm water or the hot water won't kill the fungi. I'm just going to leave it 10 minutes soaking in there. I don't think it needs any more than that does it? You tell me. Okay so there is the juice which I've just strained through a fine cloth and I'm going to split it up into these four trays because I'm going to inoculate half the seed from each batch with this stuff. So the golden bantam first. I'm actually going to plant 14 rows in each bed because that works out at about a 15 to 16 inch centre on, on each plant. I just think they're a bit cramped up at 15, 15 rows. So it it kind of splits the bed up weird so I'll be growing 12 plants with the solution and nine plants without the solution and I'm going to split the beds so I can see what's what so what we got here we've got the golden bantam Let's put that in there so I know what it is um, two four five six seven eight nine ten eleven 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That's like seven more than I need there. Hopefully that'll be okay. I need to do nine in just an ordinary soaking water. So I'll do them next. Um, I'll just get all these put into this solution first. The rising sun. I think this is a red sweet corn. I can't quite remember now, but I'm pretty sure it is. Might not be, of course. Again, I want uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Let's try twenty of them. Rising sun. My God, labels are definitely required doing some stuff like this. <clears throat> Incredible F1. Love these corn. It's a beautiful sweet corn as well. Really sweet. Uh, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, twelve, thirty, four, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, twenty. I'm growing, I'm growing more of each one. Well, I'm trying, I'm going to try and grow more of each one because you're not always successful with sweet corn when you chit it or when you grow it. And also some of the plants are kind of stunted when they do grow. So I'm, I want to give myself the best chance of having the best plants. If there's any smaller ones, that are kind of stunted. I just I'll reject them because they tend not to grow very good plants. So there we go. That's an oversow of eight seeds in each tray. Let's see how we go on with them. 
So I'm going to stack them up, leave them for a little bit. May leave them till tonight actually. Then. And now we'll just put the trays of uh, just rainwater soaked corn in. Oh guys, I wasn't even filming that then, I'm sorry. But all I've done is I've just put the all the varieties. I need nine for the other side of this, of each section. So I've put 15 seeds in and I'm just going to select the best nine when I come to plant them. So put them in that, that tray. I've sown all four. What I was saying was, I'd love to hear from anybody and if you can leave me a comment down below, if anybody, if anybody grows a really sweet heritage variety, because I'd just like to get away from these F1 seeds. I don't think, you know, that these F1s, I think they've completely lost the ability to partner with the native fungi, the mycorrhizal or whatever, because it's just been bred out of them. So I just don't think they'll have that ability. So it will be interesting to see if the Bantam, which isn't an F1, still has that, I'm not sure. But even modern strains of seeds, it's been bred out because it's... Seeds have been bred for size, for taste, for texture, but they've not thought about, you know, what goes on underground with seed, with, uh, seed breeding and plant breeding. So if anyone has got a heritage variety that they grow or they know of, can you please leave it in the comments? I think probably, possibly most of the really sweet heritage varieties of corn are probably going to be in America and I possibly need to look there. Ali, you might know, you're up in Canada, you might know of some heritage varieties. If you could let me know down below, please. Because if I can, I'll just get away from growing the F1s and just move to one Type, kind of one or two variety of heritage corn and then I can just save me on seed going forward and breed our own strain right it's going to be interesting this isn't it to see what happens right guys we have our trays of soaked corn so I'm going to do the micro risley hopefully micro lee risley active corn first and I'm saving the juice because I'm going to water the soil with the juice. You see how the little kernels have swelled up. So labelling will be the key on this job. Make sure all the labels are in the right ones. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a mess. I don't know what's what. I left these soaking overnight actually. They've had 24 hours. I did leave them, I did look at them after three or four hours and there was no difference, so they hadn't, sh they hadn't swelled up. So I just thought I'll leave them overnight. And I'll come back when I've got all these in. There's going to be a lot of trays and compost here with these. There's a hundred, uh, 200 seeds I think. We're getting on for 200 seeds we've got now. That is all of the fungal inoculant, inoculated corn, 120, 116, not 120, because there's four missing there. Those 116 corn plants, bear in mind, I've only got, uh, I can only grow 90. But, you know, if they're all, if they're all good looking plants, I'll probably put another little block of about 12 in somewhere together if I can squeeze them in. And then all to rest are under these 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 there guys. Other than 90, 190 corn plants. Got a little job to do. I'm just going to go and check those uh, click beetle traps. See if I've captured any more of the horrible things. And then I might dig a few wheat traps up. I'll video them and then if there's nothing in them, I won't bother showing you. So that's today's haul from two traps. Yeah, I actually found half of one in there. So there's there's kind of half a worm there. I think something has eaten that worm. Or it could be a worm that I made into two worms. Yeah, how many is there? Don't wriggle one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. 
eight of them. That's our two beds. But every one of them will get out. It's one less hole in the potatoes. Mrs. Duck, why aren't you eating all my wireworms? Hey, you're too busy eating that wheat, aren't you? Thank you.